Good morning, I'm Chris Barrett and you're watching COVID-19 Weekly Briefings, a resource for Pocono residents. First, we must thank Blue Ridge Cable 13 and ESU for partnering with us in this effort. Our purpose here today is to discuss health care, unemployment concerns, and present the latest local statistics. A panel of community leaders will be asked to cover a variety of topics related to COVID-19. Every Friday morning at 10 a.m., these panels will spend about a half hour providing important updates tailored specifically to the Pocono region. We are taking the necessary precautions with this presentation and social distancing as we need to. The panelists today include Elizabeth Wise, president of Lehigh Valley Hospital, Pocono, Don Seipel, president of St. Luke's Monroe campus, and finally, Rosemary Brown, PA representative from the 189th district. Panelists may change week to week. We'll let you know beforehand. First, we'd like to cover some basic statistics related to the Pocono Mountains region. We titled this the Pocono Mountains Dashboard. First, COVID update for the Pocono Mountains of the counties Wayne, Pike, Monroe, and Carbon. Currently, the cases as of the 9th sit at 1,011. Unfortunately, fatalities are at 27. If we graph this and look at it, we can see that uh, we will be first using this data as a baseline as we come back every week to review where we've gone from one week to the next. You can see the cases bar graphed and unfortunately the fatalities above them. All four counties are placed on this graph being Wayne County, Pike, Monroe, and Carbon. Age ranges are listed. As you can see, uh, some of the age ranges that have been spoken about are the most uh, with the highest rates and hospitalizations by age, we will also be looking at on a week-to-week -week basis. The number of cases and deaths in Pennsylvania as of 4-9, cases 18,228, and fatalities unfortunately at 338. Negative cases are at 87,347. As that relates to the Pocono Mountains, the cases again are at 1,011, and fatalities unfortunately at 27. Monroe County is currently 70.82% of the case totals of the Pocono Mountains um, and 70.3% of the fatalities. The Pocono Mountains is currently 5.54% of the case totals for Pennsylvania. So now we will turn to our first panelists. We would like to ask to come to the podium, Elizabeth Wise and Don Seipel. We are here today, Elizabeth and I are here today to, uh, to provide an overview of some of the COVID-19 information. We wanna co cover some key areas that we think are important to all of you as residents of the, of the greater Pocono area. First, we wanna highlight the importance of social distancing. Uh, we also wanna talk about many of you wanna know what to do if you feel like you have COVID-19, that what if, right? And so we'll talk a little bit about how you can uh, get some medical um, advice and possible testing if needed. We also wanna talk about how our health systems have been, have been working together to, to ensure that we're meeting the needs of the Monroe County residents uh, in this really difficult time. And then um, many of you uh, have asked, how can you make a difference? How can you help uh, Monroe County, and we'll specifically talk about how you can help us as healthcare systems. And we'll also talk a little bit about what's been done so far. You know, it was important for Elizabeth and I to present this uh, jointly uh, as two health systems here in uh, Monroe County. Uh, from the beginning, uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we've been um, working together, we've been learning from each other and leaning on one another to, again, to ensure that we're meeting the needs here in the county. So a little bit about social distancing, probably a term I never really heard or thought about before all of this. Uh, now it'll become part of our regular vocabulary, vocabulary moving forward. You know, we're at a point now where we would call it community spread that, um, where uh, those that are getting the COVID-19 are, are, are getting it based on their interactions in their community, normal interactions in their community. We've seen an increased number of people seeking care and more importantly, seeking serious care. 
We continue to uh, reinforce the urgency of uh, proper social distancing and the importance of that um, and the need to stay home and uh, practicing it in public. There are some websites out there that'll, that'll rate or share how a community is doing with social distancing. And uh, some of them that we've looked at has said that about 35% of Monroe County is social distancing. And we really need to get that number up. Um, we get that number up, it's really gonna impact or, or reduce the impact on our community when it comes to COVID-19. If we increase this number, the number of individuals who contract COVID-19 will decrease, the number who need healthcare, inpatient healthcare will decrease, and probably more importantly, those that need critical, uh, our critical care or intensive care units will decrease. And if you look at what's going on around the country, that's where the strain on the healthcare system has been in the intensive care units. And uh, we, really wanna, we really wanna reduce that Proper social distancing, well, we've heard this term flattening the curve. And what does that really mean? Again, that means that the number of people who are contracting um, COVID-19 will decrease. It'll have a less severe impact. It'll reduce the need and the strain on the healthcare systems. And if I can put it maybe in terms that matter to all of us, we can get back to normal quicker in our personal lives, in our work lives, business, um, I think we all just want to get back to normal. So we have a concern this weekend with this, this past week and this weekend with Passover currently um, uh, in, uh, occurring and with Easter coming up. And these are great times to get together with your families. But in this time of the COVID-19 virus, it's really important that we, we, we um, uh, remain true to our social distancing and our self-isolation and what I've been saying is you should really be having dinner with those that you normally live with and um, and and really uh, not invite others over there's a concern that if folks don't practice social distancing uh, this weekend that uh, we could see an, an increase in cases in the weeks to come talking with many of my friends and family and co-workers there's been a lot of creative ways now in which we can connect socially using platforms like Zoom and FaceTime. And these are good platforms to use while, while you're uh, uh, at your uh, Passover Seder or your Easter, uh, Easter dinner. You can um, uh, get a group together, your family together on FaceTime while you're eating and, and talk and, and still have some social connection. We've also seen, um, we also feel that a, a large impact here on Monroe County has to do with our connection to New York and New Jersey. And um, our governor um, acted early and, and imposed some uh, stay at home and social distancing and non um, urgent business uh, orders. And we know that in New York and New Jersey, they, they, there was a delay in um, uh, bringing these types of uh, restrictions forward and, and, and it really has impacted those, those areas heavily. Um, unfortunately, um, it has, the, that has also impacted our county. One of our greatest assets is our New York and New Jersey uh, transplants and those that come here and utilize our uh, um, resorts and casinos and our great outdoors. But in a time like this, we all need to stay put and socially isolate, um, but, but that has, has really caused a, um, an increase in cases here in Monroe County. Monroe County is one of the, if not the hardest county um, hit in, in Pennsylvania. Some recent articles in the newspaper, uh, Morning Call for instance today referenced uh, how Monroe County based on a, a rate is, is really the hardest county hit in this state. And uh, again, we can make a difference as a community if we, if we uh, continue to socially isolate and practice uh, good um, behaviors when we're out at the grocery store, keeping six feet, wearing a mask. Uh, these make a huge difference. Both of our healthcare systems and the Pocono Mountain Visitors Bureau have, um, have worked to, to 
get public service messages out there uh, regarding uh, social distancing. We want to reinforce this with our community. Um, we still have a, a fair amount of time ahead of us that we're going to need to practice this social distancing if we want to flatten the curve and, and get through this quicker. Um, again, we're a unified one, one voice of our healthcare system, the Poconos Mountain Visitors Bureau, some really key leaders in this county and uh, our goal really is to, to, to be strong and get through this and uh, do it with the least amount of impact that we have. I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth and she's, she's going to touch on a few of the other areas that we have. Good morning. And <clears throat> Don, I'd really like to thank you for sharing in this collaborative communication together for our community. <clears throat> so for those of you at home, you likely have questions about COVID-19 especially if you or a loved one are showing possible symptoms. On our websites, both of us have a COVID-19 website that shows the symptoms, the common symptoms of COVID-19. We have similar resources and we've collaborated on protocols to deal with this virus. So what should you do if you think you have it? You can go to either one of our websites that I listed and click on the link for COVID-19. Both of us have the same approach. If you feel that you have symptoms, during business hours, you should reach out to your primary care physician or provider, and they will give you some direction in terms of next steps. Both of us have a 24-hour hotline that is manned by an RN that can answer questions or address concerns that you have. And both of us have virtual platforms. That includes telephone visits, video visits, or e-visits. We also have testing sites in our community and locations of the testing sites are posted on each one of our websites. We are currently testing patients who are symptomatic at this time and we will direct you to the appropriate testing station after being triaged as um, by your primary care provider or by the RN triage. The St. Luke's hotline information is 1-866-785-8537, option 7, or email coronavirus as, at sluhn.org. The LVHN information, you can go to the lvhn.org website and call our hotline at 1-888-402-LVHN. And again, not everyone get tested. It really depends on your symptoms. So Don had mentioned our collaboration and both health networks and hospitals working together for our community and the communities that we serve. Some of the things that we have common practices around include visitor guidelines, we both have Spanish speaking materials that are posted on our websites, knowing that a portion of our community has Spanish as their primary language. We both have made a decision to delay elective procedures that can be safely delayed for patients. We both consistently share clinical protocols and we always observe best practices from other areas of the country that may be ahead of us in the curve. As we are learning more and gaining more experience in treating patients, we are really seeing some positive outcomes. Both of us discussed this week that more recently we have successfully taken patients off the ventilator. And honestly, that was a celebration and in our hospital as well as Don's hospital and really is a testimony to our frontline care providers, which both of us, we call them heroes. I also want to thank our very generous community that has come together to support our entire health network, health system, hospital, and I really like to recognize them. The amount of personal protective equipment that has been donated, whether it includes hand-sewn masks, we have a lot of seamstress, seamstresses in this county, so thank you very much for doing that. Gowns, um, hand sanitizers, um, we have 3D printers that are being used to make face masks. But both of us still have a need for personal protective equipment. 
And there's more information on our website in terms of the types of personal protective equipment that we are accepting, the times that we're accepting it, and the locations. So please continue to send them to us because we currently have availability now, but we are always, both of us, preparing for the future so that we can continue to meet the healthcare needs of this community. We've also been the generous recipients of food donations. I think some of us will come out of this at least 10 pounds heavier than when we started. So um, if you are continuing to give us food for our frontline care providers, for which they are very much appreciative, um, please contact um, our hospitals first for guidelines and delivery details should you choose to make a food donation. We'd like to recognize our elected officials who brought us together on common ideas and listened to us and took our ideas seriously and enacted and worked with other agencies um, to continue to provide safe care for our patients. And we'd like to recognize the Pocono Mountains Visitor Bureau and Chris Barrett for your leadership and the resources that you've provided for us. Before I turn it over to Don, I'd like to end on a personal note. And there are always times in my life where events have occurred either globally, nationally, or here at the state or locally. And I have asked myself, and maybe this has happened for you, where you've said, I'm only one person. What, what can I do? But now is the time that one person can make a difference. You can not only save your life, but the lives of others by socially distancing and staying at home. How powerful is that? Don, I'd like to turn it over to you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, I echo those thoughts. Um, when people call today, and like Elizabeth said, we are still accepting, uh, both organizations are welcoming the food donations for our employees and the PPE. But uh, more and more when folks ask a call and ask what they can do, um, uh, I say two things, pray for us. And then secondly, uh, stay home, socially isolate, socially distance, follow the guidelines. That's the greatest thing you can do for our, the teams at our hospitals. Uh, yeah, I, I would tell you that um, just really recognizing the front, frontline healthcare workers in the hospitals, the physician practices, the testing centers that it, have made themselves available to provide care to our community in this time of need is, um, it's just inspiring uh, to see that. You see the pictures in other hotspots like New York and New Jersey and Seattle and, you know, they really are the heroes in all of this. And um, getting to go up on the floors and see the work that they're doing and the care they're giving, um, just in the impact that it has uh, on them to give their to to do their regular uh, work that they would normally do is just it's just it's overwhelming. Um, I do want to thank, uh, like Elizabeth, thank all of those who have provided us with donations and their time and the the stone masks. You know, we're trying to have a little fun with that. You know, there's a lot of different patterns and just trying to have uh, bring some levity into uh, into the hospital, but they serve a really important purpose for us in general masking and saving on the the true um, masks, the N95s, and the surgical masks for when they're really needed, and, uh, but they still protect our staff, so they have been really um, well received on our part. Um, I do want to thank, uh, we have a small group of community leaders that really stepped up and kind of pulled this group together, and you know, uh, Marsha Welsh here at ESU, uh, Matt Donnell, and um, Matt Connell, I'm sorry, at Northampton, Gary Olson at uh, ESSA Bank pulled us together. We pulled Rosemary in and Chris, and so, uh, uh, and, and also Judge Worthington. Uh, they've just been a driving force in all of this, and more have joined us uh, since then. But I just want to say thank you to all of them for, for pulling this group together. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Chris. State Representative Rosemary Brown. Good morning, everyone. And I, I do want to echo 
some of the appreciation for all of our healthcare workers, all the people working very hard in the front lines, our essential workers, and especially our two healthcare providers, Lehigh Valley Health Network and St. Luke's. Uh, are just doing a fantastic job, Don and Elizabeth, in leading this charge. And it's not, it's not easy. Um, and I do want you to know that I understand how difficult this time is for each of you in your households. And my office and I, as well as other legislators and government officials, are working diligently to answer any of your questions and help you through this health and also, I believe, a financial crisis as well. There is absolutely no playbook for this crisis. The decisions that are being made are being made with the best amount of, of information and ability at the current time of this crisis. However, the number one message, as was already spoken about this morning, is and the easiest message to help us all through this crisis is to stay home and stay healthy and reduce the COVID-19 spread. As we started this crisis, and Don had mentioned this a little bit earlier as well, we had even more concerns due to, our, due to our location and our strong connections with New York and New Jersey, uh, the two states that had very high caseloads. Let's not forget we absolutely and definitely appreciate our connections with family, with employment, tourism, as if we're here with the Pocono Mountain Visitors Bureau, with tourism on a normal basis, but we are in anything but a normal situation at this point. So it really is still very important for us to continue to distance and to help calm this spread in those manners. We worked diligently in the beginning to halt short-term rentals to help this situation. We personally asked for assistance from the Mart's bus terminal and they halted their service into New York City. I'm working with other bus companies as well and looking at any other measure that we can help our community to help calm this spread and get through this together. On top of the concerns for health, I know that there are many other concerns for the ability to provide for the essentials for your family whether it's food, housing, utilities, education, and more. So to help replace some of the lost income due to the COVID-19 crisis and the provisions that were put in place for this crisis that created layoffs, it reduced hours, it furloughed, it closed businesses, so it's been very, very difficult. But to help reduce some of that lost income that you may be very concerned about, the federal government provided $2 trillion to the states to expand our unemployment which includes self-employed contractors and gig workers who normally are not eligible to apply as well. Please make sure you visit uc.pa.org for any information regarding unemployment or any questions you may have and also for applying. Most benefits will begin three to four weeks after you do file the application. However, please know that Pennsylvania is extremely overwhelmed. We have about over a million applications at this time, the highest of any state in the country. So unfortunately, it may be a little bit slower. However, the state has hired some additional staff to help process these applications. So I'm looking forward to hopefully the efficiency of that moving, moving in a better direction. For self-employed contractors, uh, gig workers, it's very important to know that the system that you need to apply for for unemployment is not that normal system. The system that you would apply for is still not up and running. So keep an eye on uc.pa.gov and that system should be coming out very soon and you can apply through that. If you apply through the normal system, it will back up some of the other unemployment and also will not be efficient for you as well. Additional federal overlay dollars, also referred to as the federal pandemic unemployment compensation, may provide an additional $600 a week uh, for individuals who are collecting regular unemployment. Once again, this is working to replace lost income in your households. Any questions with unemployment, again, you can go to uc.pa.gov or you can also send an email to uchelp at pa.gov. Again, you see help at pa.gov. Because the phone lines are very overwhelmed, it may be more efficient for you to send an email if you're questioning a claim or if you have some uh, specific questions. One-time cash payments are also being made available from the federal government to eligible individuals again, looking again to replace this lost income for your households and to help you through this crisis. These checks are anticipated to arrive hopefully by the end of next week. This will provide $1,200 for individuals making $75,000 or less, or $2,400 for couples making $150,000 or less, plus an additional $500 per dependent with a cutoff uh, age of 17. If you make more than these amounts, for every $100 
more you make over this limit, the check is reduced by $5. Additionally, the governor made an executive order yesterday to close all schools, Pennsylvania, uh, both K through 12 and higher education for the rest of the academic year. An order that he believes will protect as many people as possible. I know this is concerning and very disappointing, not only for your families, but you know, your, your children and students as well. I too have three children. I also have one college student at home who would much rather be at college than at home. But as families, we do have to work hard to adjust, to connect with our schools remotely, to stay in touch with our online systems, and to be really sure that we motivate our children's learning during this very difficult time. I encourage you to continue to look at the online resources that are out there for your school systems and supplement the learning as well. The Public Utility Commission has also signed an emergency order prohibiting any terminations of electric, natural gas, wastewater, telecommunications, steam utility bills during this disaster declaration. It is, however, though, in your best interest if you believe that you might be having an issue paying your utility bill to call your provider and ensure you work out some sort of payment plan. It will actually help reduce your stress level and, and hopefully the expectations as well. There is no family that should be without food, especially at this time. I know that Chris is going to mention and talk about our food supplies and our pantries in a moment as well. As with any other crisis, this is causing some anxiety and stress on many different levels. I want you to know that the state has also developed and recognized this. There is a mental health warm line that is available at 1-855-284-2492. Children may be having anxiety as well as they go through this crisis. So please utilize that line if you need to. Um, they will listen to your concerns, they'll triage, and they'll help give you resources. Lastly, this past week in Harrisburg, I wanted you to know I'm voting remotely to Harrisburg, but we created a COVID-19 cost and recovery task force charged with identifying immediate and urgent issues, providing a structure to catalog the Commonwealth's response to the disaster emergency and creating a recovery plan. This bill is now pending in the Senate, so we will see what, what happens with that measure over the next couple weeks. Once again, we are traveling through a very difficult journey right now, a journey that is not necessarily a pleasant journey, but nonetheless, we will remember this journey. It will teach us, it'll prepare us better for the future, and we will move forward into more positive and enjoyable times together. Please be well, please stay positive, please social distance, have a beautiful Passover and Easter, Easter. And please remember that if you do have any further questions, always feel free to contact my office. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. I'd like to thank also Elizabeth and Dawn for briefing us today. As you can see, both health systems are working very closely together for the benefit of our community in the full Pocono Mountains. As part of this briefing, and some of you may lose us from Blue Ridge Cable 13, but this full, um, briefing will be available at uh, PoconoMountains.com backslash COVID-19. We want to just talk a little bit about some community resources available through the United Way that you could avail yourself of uh, over the next few days or the next weeks as this crisis un pandemic unfolds. The Pocono Mountains visitor, or excuse me, the Pocono Mountains United Way currently has a fund called the Crisis Response Fund. The fund has been set up to help folks who are having some problems right now with food, with homelessness, almost anything. This fund has been put into place to fill the gap. And we would hope that if you have some issues that you would get in contact with the Pocono Mountains United Way at PoconoMountainsUnitedWay.org. They have an incredible staff. They'll help you walk through it. They want to help you. They've been in our community a long time and we hope that you avail yourself of helping them or helping yourself by contacting them. So as we wrap up today, we wanted to just again thank Blue Ridge Cable 13 and ESU for partnering with us. And remember, all the websites and all the information here today is also contained on PoconoMountains.com backslash COVID-19. That's PoconoMountains.com backslash COVID-19. So before we close tonight, we wanted to, or today, we wanted to really show some pictures of the real heroes who have been helping us through this process Dawn and Elizabeth have talked about it. They're heroes in their own right. But some of the frontline folks who are helping and battling day to day in the struggle on the war for COVID-19. I'm Chris Barrett. Thanks for watching.
help is just a click away. Visit PoconoMountains.com backslash COVID-19. That's PoconoMountains.com backslash COVID-19.